Liddy. Booster, go. Retro, go. Dino, go fly. Guidance, guidance, go. Ecom, go go fly. Tell you, go. Control, go fly. Inco, we are go. Network, go. Recovery, go. Capcom, we're go fly. Launch control, this is the G-Man. We are go for launch. And the design, G. Gordon. And in the studio visiting me now is a very old dear friend. His name is Lanny Davis. And uh, we are, I guess you would call it uh, an odd couple in terms of uh, uh, friends. Uh, because, you know, I am a hidebound conservative. And he is a Prius driving liberal. <laughs> I think you used to call me the liberals, liberal the defending liberal, the, the defend, indefensible. Defending the indefensible, <laughs> that's right. He is, he is a liberal, but he's a, he is a, a sensible man, and you can discuss issues with him, uh, and what, you, what you'll get is an intelligent conversation. Uh, he's a very prominent uh, attorney uh, here in uh, Washington, D.C., and you've just formed uh, an alliance uh, with another fellow, Michael Steele. Michael Steele, that's right. Who was the lieutenant governor? Lieutenant of governor of Maryland. Maryland and former Republican National Committee <laughs> chair. And we right. formed a company called Purple Nation Solutions, mm -hmm. which is after my column of many years called Purple Nation. Right, and uh, you, you've got a uh, just a whole host of people who uh, come to you for advice as to uh, how to get in something done in this town. I mean, that's what most people out in the uh, side of the Beltway, you know, in the countryside, uh, just say, you know, you can't get anything done in Washington anymore because of, of, of all the partisan rancor and this, that, and the other. And uh, you and uh, uh, Michael Steele Steel, uh, show people how it can be done. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know how it can be done, but you, you, t you two do. Well, the way uh, it can be done is the way you introduce me. And the reason that I'm here to honor you as a truly great man in a truly great uh, career, and although we thoroughly disagree with one another on politics, you have proven that conversation, that's the word you used about you and me, mm. Uh, we listen to each other. Once in a while, you actually have a good idea. <laughs> I stumble upon it. <laughs> you stumble on it as a conservative. <laughs> and you say the same thing about me. But wherever I went in the country in the years that we did your show, Gordon, I like to say uh, on this year, your last day, I wish it weren't. Wherever I went in the country, your listening audience was so immense and your voice was so influential in having people tune in, I'm talking liberals and conservatives, that wherever I would be, people would say, you know, I recognize your voice. Weren't you on the Liddy show? <laughs> and it's uh, truly, uh, I understand an awful lot of Republicans and conservatives have called in to do you the honor. And when I was at the Clinton White House, you may remember, I forget what you were celebrating in 1998, it was some anniversary, that I came over from, you were at the Mayflower Hotel doing the show. Mm -hmm. It was celebrating some anniversary of your show. And I got permission from the senior people at the Clinton White House. I said, may I go to the Mayflower Hotel as a White House official to uh, pay my respects to G. Gordon Liddy? And the people in the room looked at me and said, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. I can have a conversation with G. Gordon Liddy, and that's what President Clinton needs from conservatives. So mm -hmm. I'm here to say thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome, and uh, that, that's just the way I think uh, uh, things should be done. Uh, and, uh, you, know, you know, rancor uh, just gets in the way. Uh, that's, that's the problem. Rancor gets in the way. And, uh, you know, we, we all uh, are, are citizens of this country. We all uh, have to live here, and we all have to uh, tolerate each other's uh, idiosyncrasies and everything else. So uh, you always uh, would come in, uh, and I would play that music, uh, the liberals liberal. <laughs> I would do it every time to you. <laughs> and you, 
But uh, you, you would come in, and uh, th- there would be a particular topic. It would be something that was controversial having to do with the uh, Clinton administration, and we would discuss it. Uh, you know, we wouldn't yell at each other. Uh, and Because, I mean, who wants to listen to two people yelling at each other? That's like uh, being in a house that's too close to another house with a couple that doesn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the radio. But yeah. there's something that you also would do, Gordon. Let's say we would debate health care mm-hmm. and whether there should be a national health care system or not. And I'm sure you would argue why there shouldn't be and it ought to be left to the private sector and why government gets in the way and government's the problem. And that's a good conservative approach. And I would talk about why there needs to be a social safety net, why government is ultimately the opportunity creator. It can't be done entirely in the private market, uh, but you need the private market because that's where that's where production occurs. So there needs to be a mix. And so just between those two sentences, your perspective and my perspective, people listening would tell me when I was in cabs around the country, you know, I learned a few things listening to you and Gordon debate, even though you didn't agree. I learned a few things. So I think the point you and I always made is, while we're debating ideas, even if we don't agree on the ideas, people listening are learning that there are different approaches to accomplish the same goal. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, I, I always, uh, uh, we have to have a government, of course, and, and we have a government. But the way I look at it, you know, the, the government likes to control the private sector um, the way the tribesman in Africa has his his cow. And what they do is uh, they come up and they bleed the cow, uh, you know, and hold a little cup of there, and then they, they drink the blood of the cow, but they never take too much because they don't want anything to happen to the cow. And th- that's really the, the way this administration is. And unfortunately, they, they don't realize that they're bleeding the cow too much. <laughs> The so, cow's going to die if they don't stop. <laughs> so I always say when people say, how can you like Gordon Liddy so much? And I always say, because we have these very decent conversations. And I never take anything personally. So I'd like to say today to everybody listening, in addition to honoring you, that I will not take personally that I've just been accused of not only bleeding the cow, but <laughs> drinking the blood. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm talking about the government now. The gov- you're, you're, well, out, you're outside of government uh, now. You're, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm outside. You're, you're a, a facilitator of, uh, uh, of civil discourse, let's put it that way. Can I tell my Gordon Liddy story that I think I always tell uh, to my friends, and I don't know if your goodbye show is going to be good or bad for you for me to tell this story, but one night we had a, I'm talking to your listening audience now, we had a dinner party at my home, and I invited all my liberal Democratic friends over, <laughs> all of whom had an extreme negative view of G. Gordon Liddy from Watergate days. I said, come over and meet my friend Gordon Liddy. And we had a dinner party, and you were kind enough to answer everybody's question. They always wanted to ask about Watergate, but were afraid to ask or never could get anyone to answer. You answered every question completely uh, without uh, putting yourself back in jail, at least. I think you took the fifth a few times, but I'm only kidding. <laughs> And after dinner, we went into my living room, and I started playing the piano, which I do, and you asked me if I could play a Broadway show tune from Carousel Mm -hmm. called If I Loved You. Right. A beautiful, beautiful romantic ballad. I had no idea that everybody who's listening, G. Gordon Liddy has one of the most beautiful singing voices, and I mean this, deep baritone, fantastic singing voice. I never knew it. He comes up to my piano, and everybody in the living room is listening to G. Gordon Liddy sing If I Loved You from Carousel by Rodgers and Hammerstein with me playing the piano. And then my wife came and in the last verse harmonized with you mm-hmm. for the tremendous finish of this song. And everyone in the room gave you a standing ovation. And suddenly, Gordon, it hit me. If anyone had ever said 20 years before when Watergate was going on that G. Gordon Liddy would be in my living room singing (laughs) If I Loved You to a standing ovation from liberals, I would have said, you're smoking something, but don't inhale. (laughs) (laughs) All right. 
Thank you, Gordon, for everything you've done for both liberals, conservatives, and I think for all Americans in proving that you can be civil and disagree, and you've done a great contribution by making that point. Well, thank you uh, uh, for facilitating uh, civil discourse, because that's what you do, and that's what you do best. Thank you. All right. Well, God bless, Gordon. Thank you so much. To you and your Lanny, family. Lanny Davis. God bless him. All right, folks, we're going to take a little break for the benefit of our advertisers. When I saw you standing there, I about fell out my chair. This is the G. Gordon Liddy Show. And when you moved your mouth to speak. 